Hey, what's up, folks? This is Gray here, and I finally, uh, you know, today has been a quite the interesting day. Uh, from as you can see now, the sun is beaming on me. It's been sun pouring down rain, and then hot, humid sun, and then pouring down rain. But anyways, here we are on the sweet potato update right down here, and we're gonna get up close and personal uh, with it. And uh, I guess after I discuss this real quick and show you how they're doing, uh, I. I had a lot of comments and intriguing facts on my last video that I did when we first started this. Uh, and if you haven't seen that video yet, you might want to start there and I'll put it up over here uh, so that you guys can get to it. If it's opposite of that, it'll be here. It'll be in one of those spots. But anyways, folks, uh, so we're going to dive into how these sweet potatoes are doing. Uh, and uh, some of you uh, folks had some questions in regards to my mother plant or what I consider my mother plant, where I get my slips from. And I'm also going to show you if you don't want to do it this way, there's another way that you can do it. And I started that about two and a half weeks ago to show you that process as well in case uh, you want to start these before you put them in the ground and have them grow some roots and whatnot. But again, sweet potatoes are one of the most easiest things to grow, especially in the climate down here in Florida and other climates like it. Now, some folks may grow these in other spots in the uh, U.S., but here in Florida, it's extremely easy to grow. Basically, it's almost to the point where you can just cut them and stick them in the ground like I did, and they will grow. Uh, it's a very high caloric dense food, uh, so if you're growing things for that kind of purpose outside of your vegetables and peppers and all the other things we got going, uh, that might be the best option for you. Um, I also want to show you that I got another 50 gallon grow bag over here. I got some okra growing over there. We popped those in last week. Uh, they're doing well, and I think she has some squash in the center of that, so she's kind of doing like an okra squash thing over there. The beautiful sunflower has bloomed over there, uh, and I'm going to let it do its thing. I'll show you that just because it's beautiful. And then we have one of our watermelons that are uh, kind of uh, hanging around per se. All right. So let's kind of get into this video and uh, talk about sweet potatoes. And then I'll show you around a couple other things that I got going on. All right. All right, folks. So here's, like I said, we discussed this last time. But for some of you folks that might be uh, haven't caught up to the videos yet, these are my slips. This is my mother plant here. Um, as you can see, it has slips going everywhere. Um, this is where I pull all my slips from. Now, I started this plant a while back. Uh, and it's just been growing for the last couple of years in this thing here. Uh, and basically it all started from this little guy right here. That's where it started from. Whoops, let me see, get these leaves out of the way so you can see that. That's where it started from. And then it created all this that you see here. So I pulled my slips from here. And it's so great to know that you can just get one sweet potato. And I'm going to show you guys something way down in here. Look at this. This is ready to harvest. Let's see if I can get under here. But if you can see that in there. Look at the size of that sweet potato. Let's see if I can pull some of that. I'm going to probably pull this out here. As you can see, I'm trying to go under here. Let's see if I can pull that out here. Just so you guys can see, even from the mother plant, she is going to be giving me sweet potatoes. <laughs> it's a weird one. It's a weird tuber. But regardless, it is a sweet potato. Look at the size of that. And you guys know I got big hands. But that there is a sweet potato. Very cool, huh? We'll clean that up. And... Okay, so let's go. Uh, let's go check out these sweet potato uh, slips and see how they're doing. It's been about three weeks. And yeah, they're looking pretty good, folks. We started five, and we have. Five. Some are doing a little bit better than others, but they will continue to grow. This is the smallest one we have here. And remember, this one was just a stem. I don't remember if you remember this slip. This was just a stem. And uh, as you can see, these things are doing extremely well. This guy here is already starting to vine. And like I said, if you remember what we did earlier in the previous video, all we did was cut from here and stick one of these in the ground. And there's the other one there. And that. So we have all five of the sweet potato slips that we started about three weeks ago doing extremely well in this nasty Florida heat. And it's been raining a bit, as you, some of you Floridians know, uh, the intriguing storms that we get in the afternoon with this humidity. Matter of fact, I can show you right up there. As you can see those dark clouds, there's another storm moving in. But anyways, for you guys that were begging for that update, here they are and I can't wait to uh, here in another few weeks, we'll see how they start to spread, and then we'll uh, 
come harvest time, we'll see how many sweet potatoes that we get out of this 50 gallon grow bag. Pretty cool, eh? Now, like I said, I told you guys that we were doing, I got crap everywhere. <laughs> but anyways, um, so let me show you here. See if I can block some of that sun. Now let me move this way. This will be easier. So we have a couple okras growing. We put these in, I think about a week ago. This is okra, that's okra, that's okra, and that's okra there. And then in the middle here, we have some squash. Matter of fact, Lady Gray was so kind of you to put uh, a little thing on there. Acorn, acorn <laughs> squash, uh, Table Queen 62522 is when she started these as seeds. And then, like I said last week, we put them in here. Don't want to lose that because she'll kill me. <laughs> but uh, there we go, folks. Uh, so we'll be watching this develop as well. I know that we're deterring from the sweet potatoes. But I wanted to show you because this is not going to be a long video. Uh, I don't know if you guys want to get an update on the peppers. But they are doing fantastic as well in the 50-gallon grow bags. Uh, I've been pruning them. Uh, I don't know if you can see how tall these things are getting. Uh, this one here is probably easily about two and a half feet tall. Um, so to me, it looks like these things are doing well. And uh, this is a short one. I should probably pull this, but I, uh, I'm kind of letting this one flower a little bit, as you can see some of the flowers here on the plant. Uh, and they're all doing pretty well. What I'm trying to get out of them is growth. And I missed, uh, misidentified this one last time. This one is actually a Tabasco, uh, uh, heirloom Tabasco plant. Uh, and they can be yellow, red, or orange, a couple of colors, but usually we try to get them that color there. Like I said, there's a lot of flowers through here on these pepper plants as well. Just to kind of give you guys an idea, you can see the blooms on that guy there. The blooms here as well. So these ladies are doing very well. Let's kind of take a quick glance in there at this beautiful, amazing sunflower. She needs to be moved. I'm trying to get into here. She needs to be moved, but look at that gorgeous, look at that backdrop, that rain cloud in the back and that beautiful sunflower there. God, it's a gorgeous view, at least from my perspective. I just love Mother Nature and how she produces. And then look at this guy here hanging out with us. Look at this guy here. Look at this big old guy. Look at that big old watermelon there. And uh, we were supposed to, uh, let me see if I can get a better look at this here. We were supposed to... Uh, some of this stuff out the way for you guys we were supposed to uh get some uh what is it called the ladies stockings and put them on there but she's been doing pretty good we're watching it there to make sure and like i said i don't know if you can see the size of that with my hand and they get about the size of a, uh, a bowling ball so she still has some time to grow on there as well but all in all the garden is doing its thing and the last thing i want to update look at that gorgeous lady there is uh cut through here a little bit Oh, we're getting a new bud over here on the eggplants. Matter of fact, where is that? we got some eggplants over there. I don't know if you guys can see there. And there's a couple eggplants. But, uh, so the Cherry 100 is almost done. Uh, I'm going to be cutting it all back, just like I did this. This was the uh, black cherry or black something tomato. I can forget now. I cut that one all the way back, and I'm going to pull all those weeds out and repurpose the soil. Uh, but they about had to their end of life here. And uh, matter of fact, let me go over here real quick before I end this video. Don't want to go forever on this. Um, but we're trying to stay on top of it, picking them as we go. I'll probably pick some this evening. Uh, I got some more beans to pick as well, the purple hall peas, as you can see there. And a lot of you guys remember we had that war of aphids in here. So as the ladybugs took care of this situation, uh, the plant... Uh, as the ladybugs moved on to other greener pastures, and what I mean by that is other parts of the garden, um, I started cutting this thing back here, and uh, this will grow back. As you can see, we have new growth here, as you can see there. And some of you folks may ask what that is there and may not agree with it, but that is, it doesn't affect my soil, it's for ants. Ants, from my understanding, are the root of all aphid issues, so the ants will kind of go in there and take what's inside there, and take it home. This is without spraying anything on my plant. They have access to it. I make sure that I pull it out before I water and so on and so forth. And we'll get all this new growth and these beans will bounce back. But like I said, the ladybugs did the majority of the work on these plants. Um, I'm trying to think if there was anything else I wanted to say in regards to that. Okay, 
Well, now I remember what I was going to say. So once I cut these things back and harvest what's left of them, and I may take uh, some of these things and cut them and start new cherry 100s just to keep them going. Because uh, as it gets cooler, of course, here in Florida, it's always a consistently hot situation here. So don't, what I mean by cooler is maybe in the low 80s. But what we're going to do is once I repurpose some of this soil and mix some new stuff up, I'm going to put a cherry 1 million here. Uh, so the cherry 100s, the sweet cherry 100s, we're going to put a cherry 1 million uh, after we clean this up and go from there. And I think that's about it, folks. I think that's about it. Let me go ahead and wrap this video up. And folks, like usual, I almost forget things because I wanted to show you the other thing that I got going on here in regards to the sweet potatoes. But luckily, I remembered right towards the end. And I'm going to get up close and show you this real quick. But so I decided to take a couple of these slips and throw them in a jar with water to see how they do. And as you can see here, I don't know if you can see, I'll get it close here in a second, but we got roots. This is about two weeks on the back patio uh, of them. Uh, just They were just some slips I cut and to see how the roots grow in this water. And uh, let me bring it up close so that you guys can see this. Uh, in case that you don't want to do it the way I did in that previous video, you can do it like this as well. Uh, maybe if you want to take a five gallon bucket, you want to take a slip and you want to cut it, you can put it in water first uh, and let it sprout some roots and then put that and transplant it from there. But they do, as you can see, they do just as well in the 50 gallon grow bag. So let me get up close so you guys can see this here. And you can see those roots in there. Get my hands out the way so you guys can see a little bit better. But see all those roots? And that's just in a couple of weeks, folks. Just in a couple of weeks, we got all those roots in a mason jar with some slips. Look at that. Now what we can do is we can transplant these where we want to plant them and go from there. So that kind of gives you a few ideas. Let me set this down here. So I don't spill it or make anything out. But also, what I noticed from my perspective from doing it that way is every couple of days I will change the water uh, on something like that because it'll start to get some discoloration and things like that. And I don't know. I just like to keep fresh water in there. So every few days I will change out the water that's in there. Uh, and uh, I feel that the plants do better and happier with that. And like I said, when you do it that way, you want to make sure it's in a warm environment. You, don't, you want the water to be warm. Uh, not hot, but you want it to be warm. Uh, like room temperature is good. Uh, and have it kind of on, if you're going to do it inside, you can put it on a, on a windowsill where it gets sun, you know, uh, because sweet potatoes love sun and, uh, and kind of, a, you know, warm environment. That's why I kind of put mine outside on the patio here behind me. Uh, and it was what I did. So because of shock and stuff like that, you know, just to be kind of careful with things, I put it in a semi shaded or partially uh, partial sun uh, most of the time initially. And then I would move them out sometimes during the day when I'm out here in the garden and put them in the full sun. For a little while so they can enjoy some full sun during the afternoon and then as they took hold uh, then I moved them into different spots I didn't want to put them in direct Sun because the Sun will make that water extremely hot uh, you know as it reflects through that glass so again just be uh, you know be cautious in the way you do things and experiment folks that's what gardening all this gardening stuff is is experimenting learning understanding educating yourself it is so much fun it truly is folks and uh, like I said, I've learned so much from you, and I hope some of you folks out there are learning from me as well. Other than that, if you got any value out of this, please hit that thumbs up button, and I would like to hear your comments below. Uh, or what are you starting this year? What are you growing new this year uh, that you haven't grown before? Uh, have you ever seen someone do sweet potatoes the way I'm doing sweet potatoes? And are you looking forward to the final harvest on that? And uh, so on and so forth. So I look forward to reading your comments, and uh, you guys, please enjoy the rest of your day. I'm assuming this is going to come out tomorrow morning, being that it's so late. Uh, for me to get this video done uh, with the, the Florida weather patterns. <laughs> Anyways, be safe out there. Know that you're not alone. This is Gray Man. I'm out. I'll see you guys in a rebound. God bless.